Audston is a very extraordinary house, although from the outside it may look like a French Renaissance chateau. And on the inside, you'll see many of the rooms are lined with panelling from 18th century French houses. It isn't a house that was built up over hundreds of years, and it in fact was put together in a very short time by one man, Ferdinand de Rothschild, who created it primarily as a, a stage set, really, for very lavish entertaining and as a place to show off his collection of art. Ferdinand had a great love for French 18th century history and for its art and he collected things that had wonderful provenances that came from historical figures like Marie Antoinette or Louis XV. And in his interiors, he combined these wonderful pieces of decorative arts with paintings, and in his case, most often, with English 18th century portraits by Reynolds and Gainsborough. And he instructed his dealer that he was interested in paintings of women, of beautiful women. In this room we have the Duchess of Cumberland by Reynolds, who was a famous beauty and who ran off with one of the sons of George III, which resulted in the Marriage Act that we have today where the sovereign has to approve the marriage of one of the family. Ferdinand writes about his collecting, which was the great passion of his life. Um, and his father introduced him to works of art. And he writes very touchingly about unpacking small things which he found incredibly beautiful. But they were pretty serious, the Rothschild family, in their collecting. I think they had considerable knowledge of French 18th century decorative arts and uh, of Wunderkammer type objects. And indeed, in the case of Ferdinand, of English 18th century portraiture and painters generally. Everywhere you look at Wadston, there's beauty and there's wonder. We're standing here in the smoking room, which contained Baron Ferdinand's Renaissance Museum when he was living in the house. And if you look around the room now, you will find all sorts of treasures from the 16th and 17th century, whether that's tin glazed earthenware, Marlika, whether it's rock crystal or carved ivories or limoges enamel or possibly silver and silver gilt. And the whole combines into the most wonderful treasury, really, and he used to bring his guests here, perhaps in the evening, after dinner. So you have to imagine rooms like this seen through veils of cigar smoke. And he would perhaps show off the latest object which he had acquired for the admiration of his guests. One of the things that marks out Ferdinand's collections is that he really purchased only the best. And this can really be seen in the collection of Sev Porcelain that he assembled here at Wadston. To give you an idea of what Ferdinand was like as a collector, I want to show you this vase in the shape of a ship made by the Sev porcelain factory. Now it's probably the most iconic shape associated with the factory. And whereas most people would begin collecting by buying a cup and saucer and then as they got more experience they would move up if you want, this is the very first thing Ferdinand bought ever as a collector. When he bought this Ferdinand was only 21 years old. A collection as fabulous and as fragile as this really wouldn't have survived without some very, very careful care and attention over the years. And for that, we're grateful to Alice, Ferdinand's sister, who inherited the house. And she was something of a dragon um, and introduced what are still known in the house as Miss Alice's rules, which were the rules and the principles by which the contents of the house were to be preserved and conserved. Alice understood that one of the greatest enemies for a collection like this is light, because light fades textiles, it leaches the colour out of objects, it fades veneers. If you look, for example, at some of the upholstered cushions in the collection, you can see that at the backs and underneath, where the light hasn't penetrated, the colours are incredibly rich and strong, whereas on the light exposed surfaces, they're much more faded. There is, of course, something of a conflict between a very large number of visitors and preserving a collection. I mean, cultural tourism is a phenomenon of the 21st century, and it has its dangers. So we go to enormous trouble in the months when we're closed to preserve the collection, to keep light off it, to see it's in good condition, so that future generations will be able to enjoy it. Everything is covered up, the carpets are rolled, all of the porcelain is put away in its original boxes. And this is so that we can do the deep conservation clean that we need to do every winter. Of all the other Rothschild family houses, 
This is the one, I think, that is preserved, has its collections intact, adds to those collections, does things which enhance the collections, makes life more fun, if you like, for people who come here. And that's what we're all about.